Hey you guys, happy summer day. I'm excited to come to you with the Arkansas Ministry Tour. So this is gonna take a couple of weeks to produce. Super excited about it. My favorite thing about this tour is that there was a ton of teenagers uh, that attended these house meetings. So you'll notice that it's two house meetings in a row um, on two different nights and you'll notice how much more uh, everyone who attended received even the second night um, and how the Lord really just warmed them up to the move of his power and his love. Also, this is the tour, if you remember me telling the story of where we saw the glory cloud, the mist. Um, so if you haven't seen that story, you can find it somewhere in my playlist. Um, but before this Arkansas ministry started, um, we saw a glory cloud when we were doing a prayer time in the little kitchenette area. It was amazing. I personally have never seen that before. It was incredible. It was while I was actually ministering over the students who led worship for this as well. All right, enough talking. Let's jump to it. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Click like, leave me a comment, hit your notification bell so that you are alerted every time I release another episode. All right, now let's do it. So the fun thing about these house meetings is, um, you know, I do conferences and I write trainings and I write books and all that stuff, but the conference or the house meetings, I just show up for. Like, I don't write a message, I don't prepare a message, um, and I really just ask the Lord if there's something he wants to say to the people in the room. And so it was interesting because you talked about, you know, that uh, the all, all you can eat buffet. And when I was praying earlier, the Lord laid on my heart just Psalm 42 where it talked about, uh, as a deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. And there's so many places in Scripture that talk about just the hungering and that, that insatisfaction that we have. I don't even know if that's a word, but it is meant in the spirit, like when we feel like I just can't get enough. So I, I was kind of looking up some passages of scripture, and I'm going to read some to you, and we're going to let the word speak for itself. But I was thinking about um, Psalm 42, where it says, that the deer panic for the water, so my soul, so my, so my soul longs for you. But I'm reminded of in John 7, 37, where Jesus comes to the people, when he's talking to the disciples, and he says, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out, and he said, if anyone thirsts, but he's not a respecter of a person. If anyone thirsts, this is the one place where you're not going to find a biasness. Come on, we need that in our culture. Where you're not going to have a favoritism because we're all his favorite. Right. Come on, you're his favorite, I'm his favorite. You're, wouldn't you like to be a favorite too? Right? On the last day, Jesus said, that he said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Now there's an invitation in this, and you and I talked a little bit about that, right? That the Holy Spirit is not your doer, he's your helper. And in everything that God speaks to us, there's an invitation. And I know there have been times and spaces in my life where I've kind of looked to my right and looked to my left and thought, why is that person doing that? And why is that person doing that? And I'm still here and the Lord has spoken like, I invited you. The difference is they responded when you did it. And tonight there's an invitation to every single person in this room. The same as he's invited me, the same as he has invited Ashley, the same as he has invited every person in this room. But the, the response is where it's important. Will you come to him and will you drink? And then he goes on and says this, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, I want you to get a picture of this because this is in John chapter 7 and a few chapters before this in John chapter 4 where Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. It's the longest conversation in scripture, by the way. You're the woman? It's the longest conversation we see Jesus having with somebody in scripture. John chapter 4, the woman at the well, and he says, For a wellspring of life will spring up from within your belly. And he says, and he innards of who you are. We see this movement, this shift from something that I contain to something that I can't contain, right? We see the shift from a wellspring of life that's inside of me to a river of flowing water that I cannot contain. And how many of you know we've tried to contain God? How many of you know we've tried to define God? We sat here and we sang this song like his name is power. He brings healing. He drops he breaks shackles. But when we see it, we're like, I don't know. We sing it, we claim it, but when we, when it comes time for us to experience it, we're not so sure. But it goes on and it says this, 
Uh, and so he says that this will be a living water that flows out from you. And but he spoke this concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I was, uh, when Liz and I were talking earlier and I said I was on the plane, I was reminded of in Deuteronomy 32 when, um, when God was speaking of the nation of Jacob and he was talking about how he drew them out of the wilderness and how he plucked them out of this orphan state. And he goes on and he says, I did this for him, I did this for him. But this one verse struck me, it says, and I made him to draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock. And it's the idea of even that prophetic word in the Old Testament saying, but I will cause honey to flow in your life, which is the evidence of the prosperity and the promise of God, the abundance of God. We know he was leading them into a land filled with milk and honey. And then he says, and from the and the oil from the flinty rock. And then in Job, he says, when I washed my steps with butter and the oil poured out of me like a river. All these places, even in the Old Testament, where there's, there's this foreshadowing of the movement of the Holy Spirit. And I was convicted on the plane because I think a lot of times, I've, I've said it, I'll say it, we talk about like we're praying for a double portion. And the Lord began to reveal to me in John 3, 34, he said, I tell you that I'm going to give you a spirit without measure. The Old Testament measures. The Old Testament said, oh, you're not going to just get a portion, you're going to get a double portion. But the New Testament says you have an unlimited portion. I am a spirit without measure. I am never ending. I am limitless. I am without measure. It says it like this in the Passion Translation. The one, capital O, meaning Jesus, whom God had sent to represent him, will speak the words of God. Because God has poured out upon him the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And it is no longer with any limitation and without any measure. And it will be given unto you. And then we know that Jesus goes on. He says, but you will receive power. Come on, everybody put your hands on your tummy. And say, I have received power. I have received power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in all of Samaria and to the ends of all the earth. Now, I like to tell people, you know, I've got an interesting little bit of a spiritual butt. I was raised a Catholic. I got saved when I was 18. I stepped into the Baptist church. I schooled with the Baptists, loved the word of God. And it was probably not until I was 38, 39 years old when I received the Baptist. And the combination of all of those things has really taught me the beauty of the Trinity of who God is, the sovereignty of God who is to be revered and is to be awed, and, and the beauty of Jesus and the Word of God and knowing the Word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a powerful mixture. And I wrote my last book that I wrote, well, the, the one that's not published yet, The, the Pursuit of His Glory. In fact, there, I was telling Ashley today, she was asking which book was my favorite, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. The Pursuit of His Glory, it talks a lot about the, the glory of the Lord, which is His character, His nature, and teach on what that is. And it talks about the anointing of God, which is the ways, the tangible way of God. I like to say the glory is His heart, and the, the anointing is His hand. So when we begin to feel, you know, we say, like, I feel, I feel the Lord moving. What you're feeling is, you're feeling His anointing. What you know is His character. And the important thing that we teach in this book is that if you have the anointing without his character, it's very dangerous. Come on, even the magicians in the Old Testament could imitate the anointing. It's the importance of knowing his character and knowing his heart and knowing his love. But for years I knew God, but I didn't know his power. And I struggled with clinical depression and panic anxiety attacks. I had extreme paranoia. It was ridiculous. When I think I'm going on, I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. But it was very real for me. And I had all this knowledge of I could be, who I should be. I had all this information, but I had no power to activate that information in my life. So when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I kind of was a little mad at first. I was like, are you serious right now? Like, this is, where have you been, you know? And and, and, and hear me, I'm not going to go into full teaching, but on salvation, you get the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the upon it. Okay? I'm talking about not just the infilling, I'm talking about the power that you walk in. When Jesus came here on earth, he was filled with the character and the nature of God. He had the Holy Spirit in him. But on his baptism, there was a something, something that happened that came upon him. And it was after that something, something that he started to operate in the manifestational gifts. Okay? So the infilling.
fulfilling the in me in you is for you, but the applying is for you, it's for others. Yeah. And I say that with a level of seriousness because you need to know that the gifts of the Lord are not toys, they're tools. Yeah. And so I believe there's a lot of people in here who've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I'm praying that everybody, when they walk out of here, that they experience not just the infilling, but the applying. There's no end to how much we can have with him. Come on, that's an exciting thought. Amen. Let me tell you what. I've seen some amazing things. I've seen people get healed. I've had oil manifest and ripped on my face. I have seen people levitate off the floor because demons so wrenched their bodies. And then I've watched them be delivered. I have seen people come in wheelchairs and walk out walking. I've seen people immediately begin to speak in tongues. I've seen angels manifest. Tonight, I saw the Father of God. Yes, I mean, we saw it. it. Come on, if you saw it, raise your hand and testify. We were in there praying, and the fog of God, and there was some fog moving around this room. Don't dismiss that. See, I mean, when, when Moses, when, when, when there was a burning bush in the desert, which, by the way, was not unusual, it was very hot in the desert. It was not unusual for a bush to burn. But the Bible says, when Moses did not turn aside. In other words, he didn't dismiss it and be like, eh, it's just another burning bush. When he stopped and he paid attention, when he did not turn aside, that's when the revelation of God began to move. And I think a lot of times we try, we dismiss things, we miss things. We try to explain things. And, and point blank, you can't explain the supernatural. That's right, man. You cannot explain the supernatural. And my prayer is that you leave here tonight a little dumbfounded. I don't know what happened. My, my son used to be a youth pastor. We would do a bunch of youth leaders. Leaders, leaders is actually a youth pastor. I was not too far from here. And, um, and they would bring me in for the altar call. And so we have some, on my YouTube, we have this, this video of all these it was like the junior high section. You know, the junior high, I always stay away from the high schoolers, right? All right. The junior highs are over here. The high, and, and I'm ministering to them. And all of a sudden, I, I just asked, like, all the junior highers had fallen out in the spirit. And I asked them to bring the music down. And I'm telling you, I mean, the sound of these kids just speaking in tongues. It was like angels had penetrated our realm. I cannot explain it. And, and my son got up there afterwards and he said, you know, there are some things that you just have to be there for. You can't explain it. You'll try to retell it. And people kind of tip their head and look at you. And so they ended up having a shirt made. It was the theme of their youth that because you just have to be there. Afterwards, you just have to be there. And, and I say all that to say, you guys are here tonight. And, and how, many of you, how many of you just on faith... By lifting up your hands, I'm not even doing every high, high head, never bow, but like, what all that thing is. Just raise your hands and testify like I'm expecting God to do something big tonight. I'm expecting God to do something big tonight. And I ask you that because you alone have the power to predetermine what kind of encounter you have with Christ. The woman with the issue of blood said, I know, I know if I touch the edge of his cloak, I will be healed. She determined that. And there's a lot of people who would say, well, that'll never happen to me, or that's not real. That's they, they, they talk all kinds of smack in my TikTok, and I'm like, I believe that's true for you. I believe that will probably never happen for you. I believe that will never be true for you, because you've already decided in your head that God doesn't work like that. And so we have to kind of predetermine that I can't explain God. He's above all that I can think. He's above all that I can ask. Because the Bible says he's immeasurably greater than we can ever ask or imagine. And that the spirit is given to us without measure. Without any limitation. So I want to was uh, is it a house meeting last, last, last week of San Antonio, Fort Worth, the week before. And we, we talked about the song Ocean where it says your trust is without borders. I try to think about that for a moment. Where your trust is without borders. Because... That means I'm never going to bump into my doubt. I'm never, sometimes we trust God a little bit, but then we come, in, we run into a conflict, or we run into, well, it didn't work, or we run into, and then all of a sudden we come up to the border in our trust. 
And, and I want us to just really ask the Holy Spirit to break down any borders in our faith, any borders in our belief, any doctrine that you have, any theology you have, things that you've been taught. We talked about that today. Like, things that we've been taught. It's like, it's not in the Bible. There were not three wise men. It's just like, that's, look at somebody like, what? Just crush my Christmas picture. But there's so many things that we are looking, we learn that are not true. And we want to let God be God tonight. We want to let God be God. So one of the things that I love to do, I believe wholeheartedly in, and this is what you guys all see on TikTok, is I believe in the demonstration of his power. Just one way. I think the scripture is clear. It talks about in Mark 16, it gives the great commission. And it says, go and preach the gospel into all the world. And these will be the signs of those who believe. They will speak in new tongues. They will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. They will take up serpents with their hands. They will cast out demons in mind. And then it goes on in verse 19 and it says, And so they went and they preached the word and the Lord confirmed the word to the company of sons. I think we've missed it. I think we've missed it. We want a confirmation of the Lord's signs. We want our little the Lord's work through signs. We want a confirmation. How many of you need a confirmation in your life? Awesome, awesome. So that being said, I'm always up for demonstration and I'm always in love for teaching and training people in the room. Like I told Ashley, I said, if I minister to everybody, you guys are like, ooh, I felt great, I feel fat and happy, and I feel encouraged. But you don't feel empowered to go and do it, then I've missed the mark.
the Shekinah glory came in so thick that the priests could no longer stand and perform their duty. Paul was in a trance-like state when he received a vision of God. John didn't know if he was in the body or out of the body when he received the entire book of Revelations. Is this weird? Yes. And I 